Hey guys, <clears throat> it's a new day. Today's a work day, so you might see my bed is not made. You still see the signs for me waking up, is rolling out of bed. Just exhausted. But that's okay. Also, my tea is. Can you hear this? I don't know if that's actually showing up. My tea is like screaming at me for some reason. I don't know what that is about. Alright. But that's okay. Because today we're going to do shaders. Um, quite a big topic. Uh, it's just, you know, half of the title of this course is shader programming. So, um, obviously shaders are in themselves <laughs> quite its own world. But we're going to dip our little toes in today. Um, so... So shaders includes vertex shader and uh, fragment shaders. If you remember from the from the pipeline video, a vertex shader works on groups of uh, vertices and transform them to where they should be on screen. And then the fragment shader is responsible for um, uh, determining each of the pixels or the fragments to um, decide what they should look like color wise all right so let's draw <clears throat> all right so we just made whoops so we just made a draw call draw call and that's going to be fed into our vertex shader Ver Shader. I'm just gonna put those points on screen. Decide where those are gonna be. All right. So what does the shader look like? Uh, OpenGL uses something called GLSL, uh, which stands for OpenGL Shader Language. I might. I'm just gonna go ahead and write that down. Actually. Uh, let's go down here. GLSL Open GL Shader Language And in DirectX you have something called HLSL Which I don't know what it stands for actually Half-Life maybe? Half-Life Shader Language? <laughs> I'd buy it Um so these are, as I, far as I know, at least the two major, the two major major shader languages. Um, if you're working in Unity, uh, you're using their own proprietary, uh, pro pro proprietary, propri proprietary uh, shader system, which is called something. Uh, I don't remember, um, but in the end, that gets compiled into either uh, GLSL or HLSL. Or uh, yeah, and which then gets compiled into actual bytecode that's being um, uh, ran on the graphics card. Excuse me while I sip my tea in thought. Actually, it's too warm, I can't sip this. <coughs> And if you're using um, Unreal Engine, they have their own uh, material editor, which is a node-based uh, system. But then again, that gets compiled into HLSL, uh, or I don't, I don't even think they support OpenGL anymore. Uh, but if you've used uh, their material uh, editor, there's something called a custom node, in which case you can write in just uh, raw HLSL code which then gets inserted into the final the final product. All right, so what does GLSL look like? Uh, let's take, uh, let's just uh, write a, uh, uh, let's just write a, uh, an example vertex shader. So it's very similar to uh, C. The language is sort of based on how C uh, looks and works. 
and it's we're gonna have a main function all right so we're gonna have a voids main void this time and not int like in c and c plus plus and just like in c and c plus plus this is the entry point of the shader all right so it's very much a program being ran on the uh, on the uh, graphics card and in case of the vertex shader we are expected to set a magic variable called gl underscore position we're expected to set this variable within main and that's going to be you know the final vertex position uh, so this is run three times per triangle so once per vertex uh, and and the goal is to uh, output what the final position on screen is going to be uh, and that is a vector four so this uh, this function here vec4 constructs a vec4 only you can see it as a constructor and vec4 is a type so that's a, a, a vector with four floats in it and uh, uh, and you know it's the it's the uh, standard NDC. Um, well, I've been talking about the square, but it's actually a cube. But for all intents and purposes, for purposes for now, we're just gonna ignore the third dimension. So in this case, it's the the minus one to one, and the minus one to one in the y and x axis. Um, so we're gonna return that, and then the third dimension we're just not gonna care about. And what's about the fourth dimension? Why is a vector four? Uh, the fourth element, which is called W, by the way. So you have X, Y, and C, and then W. Um, we're just gonna ignore that for now. Know that it has to do with perspective. All right. We're gonna get back to that at some point, but for now, I want you guys to always insert one. All right, so it's gonna be x and y, which we're gonna get from the attributes uh, later on, and then we're just gonna type zero for the z axis. We're just gonna say we don't have any depth uh, right now, and then we're gonna type one for the w component. All right, and 99% of the time, if you're working in four dimensions in the shader or yeah, in CPU either, uh, you want to have one as the W component, uh, unless you really know what you're doing. Um, right, so that's the main function. So this is gonna be ran for each of the vertices in the vertex shader. But we want to have access to the X and Y component that we sent in through the, uh, through the attribute, remember? We set up the attribute last time this attribute at index zero uh, and we set that to be a float two so a vec two um, and we bound it to this uh, vbo that has our nice data in it so how do we get the data inside of the shader um, we write in vec two and then we it's up to us what we want to call it in the shader we can call it whatever we want but i'm going to call it a position Whoops. Uh, naming conventions vary greatly. I like to call it a underscore for attribute. So it's gonna be a underscore position for, you know, attribute position. Um, so this is how we reference attributes, bound attributes in the shader. Um, in the vertex shader, I, sh I should be very clear about that. We haven't gotten to a fragment shader yet, but for now I'm just only talking about the vertex shader. Um, so that's how we reference uh, um, attributes. And you might ask, okay, so we set index zero here. What if we didn't set index zero here? What if, what if we set index one? I'm gonna say, don't worry about that right now. As long as you set it to zero, it will work uh, f for now. And we're gonna fix later. So it always works. We have a little bit more control, but at least I think I might be wrong on this. You know, you never know with OpenGL, you know how it's changed and so on. But it will actually be sequential. So if we have our in vec three a normal, this a position will be referencing attribute zero, and then a normal will be referencing attribute one, and then you know if we make a third one, that will be attribute two, and so on. So it will just um, in the order they appear in code is which index of attribute they will be. Uh, referring to oops um, but in our case we only have one attribute so we're just not gonna worry about that right now <clears throat> uh, 
<clears throat> right. Okay. So A position is going to be... Uh, oh. This is being ran for each vertex. And uh, in each of these vertexes, uh, in each of these instances or whatever I should call them of the vertex shader, this A position variable is going to be set to uh, this data here. So, you know, it's going to be ran once with 0 and 0 0.5 being in this vector 2. Then it's going to be run again, and then it's going to be minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 in this A position, and then it's going to be run again, and it's going to be 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5. So this is going to, you know, take one vertex at a time and set those, these, uh, this attribute variable. All right, we just want to hammer this home really clearly. Really clearly. Uh, so we want to just feed this into the GL position, right? Because it doesn't know to link like the A position and the GL position, like it doesn't know to make that link and you send it in. Uh, we actually have to tell it to be like, okay, this A position, that is the position of the vertex, use that in the GL position. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, we can do, uh, just instead of XY, which was just the temp stuff I wrote, I can do A position, whoops, A position X. Whoops, and a position y. Whoops. Um, so then the GL position, the final position in the MDC, like the normalized device coordinates, will be x component will be the x component of the attribute. The y component will be the y component of the attribute. Uh, the z component will be zero, and the w component will be one. Great. Uh, let's start here and see what happens. Um, the problem now is that, you know, OpenGL doesn't come with any sort of file loading by default. Uh, it just wants the source as a string. So we're actually going to do something that may look very ugly to you guys. We're gonna, just going to hard code this in our file. So we're just going to hard code it as a string. So we're gonna make a const char pointer. Uh, I'll write uh, vert source, all right? And if you wanna do multi-line, uh, you can just do uh, two quotation marks and then use enter. So then you can keep, do another pair of quotation marks and write the next line. So we'll do uh, in vec to a position, all right? And then we'll do void main, and then I'll do the, the these and then I'll just do uh, GL position equals vec4 a position whoops x a position y 0 1 right and then don't forget the uh, semicolon at the very end there for to end the string All right, so this may or may not work, but let's try. Um, excuse me, I just need to wipe my nose real quick. It's a bit cold in my apartment. Good thing I have tea. Oh, I'm just gonna scroll up here so you can look at it. Like this recording where you're just waiting for me to finish drinking the tea. It's a good thing you can fast forward, right? It just like hits forward, 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 like five seconds at a time. And then it's like all of a sudden I've written all this bunch of code. So I have to go back again. So I just skip the part where I drink tea very slowly. Let's drink some more. How about that? Don't waste everyone's time. <clears throat> What was I doing? Oh yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> how do we create a shader? Sh uh, vertex shader transforming the vertices to screen. Wowza. Um, 
Well, uh, shaders are kept track of with handles, just like everything else. Um, so it's made with the gl create shader function. And this time it actually returns a UI, so you don't have to pass in a pointer, it returns the, the handle to the shader. But it takes this type argument, and that is which type of shader we're creating. So are we creating a vertex shader, or a fragment, or uh, so on. So I'm just going to type gl uh, blah, 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 vertex shader, alright? So I want to create a vertex shader handle, and then I'll save that. Vert shader. Um, great. Yes, okay. Step two, we have to provide a source. So now we're going to tell OpenGL that, hey, this vertex shader, here's the source code for that shader. So we're going to use GL shader source. Uh, and here's a few things. So we have GLU in shader, and that's going to be the handle to the shader. So we're going to do vert shader. Then we have the count, uh, and that's uh, how many source code strings we're going to provide. And this is for when you're doing includes, for example. So if you want to implement includes, uh, if you include another source file from within your uh, shader source file, you want to provide them all at once, saying, like, here are all the source strings with includes uh, that you can compile. But we don't care. We only have one, so I'm just going to type one. <coughs> and here's, okay, so here's a pointer to a pointer, right? So it's a, it's a GL char pointer pointer. Don't worry about this const here. And... The reason it's a double pointer is that a string is a char pointer, right? So it's a um, it's a pointer to char um, memory. Uh, you can see that as a char array. But then, since we can compile multiple sources at once, this is expecting an array of strings. And that means it's expecting an array of char arrays. So that's why it's a double um, double pointer. Um, so all we have to do is really just give it the pointer to the vert source, all right? Because that is already a pointer, right? It's already a char array. So we just provide a pointer to that, and we should be golden. So we'll do vert source, like so. Uh, and here's uh, giving uh, an array of lengths, all right? So that's if our strings are not null terminated. Um, which means there's a zero at the end of the string. Um, we have to provide provide the length, so we have to say how long all, each of the source codes are, and it's an array, since we can provide multiple source codes. Um, but if they are null terminated, like ours is here, uh, by default, uh, hard coded strings like this are always null terminated. Um, we don't need to do that. We can just provide null. Uh, so I'll just do null. And that tells OpenGL that all our sources are null terminated. All right, great. Uh, so next step is compiling. So now we're given the source and now we're going to compile the shader. Uh, so we used type gl compile. Whoops, compile, compile shader. That's not how you spell that, compile shader. And then it is the handle to the shader we want to compile. We're going to compile our vert shader. Oops. All right. So I'm going to hit F6. And let's see what happens. Okay, nothing very interesting. Like, we're not using the shader or anything. But the fact that it ran is a good thing. And it compiled, hopefully, for everyone. If it didn't compile, then, you know, just go back and see what happens. Um... But how do we know if the actual shader compiled? How do we know that? All right. What if we had a what if I had a compiler or what if I just typed like whoops, I uh, yeah, kgh like that. And then run. what will happen then? It will still work just fine. So it's very helpful for us to 
um, find out how did the compilation actually go. What what what, what was the result? Um, so there is this nice little neat function called a GL shader log. No, get shader log. There we go. Okay, GL. <coughs> Excuse me. GL get shader info log, and this will uh, retrieve any sort of output results that has been generated from compiling shaders, linking shaders, and so on. Um, so it's expecting the shader. It needs to get the info log from. So we get the word shader. Bird shader. And then buff size. <coughs> So it's expecting a buffer, uh, a char buffer to write to copy the info log to. So it's having, it has the info log somewhere in memory and calling GL get shader info log would copy that buff, uh, that info log into some other buffer. So we have to just create that buffer really quick. So I'm just going to make a static, a static char buffer, the log buffer, log buffer. It doesn't need to be static really. I, I don't know why not, and then we'll do 1024. Just make sure it's big enough to handle whatever info log we're going to be generating. So buff size 1024, that's the size of the buffer. So that it doesn't, if our log buffer is small, um, too small, so it can't, uh, it can't actually copy over the whole message log into our buffer, it will stop at size. So it, it doesn't get a seg uh, segmentation fault from its overwriting from uh, our buffer. Uh, then it gets a pointer to a GL size i length, and that is if we want to get how big the string is or how big the info log is. It will uh, write that to that to that integer. We're just gonna type null. We don't really care how big it is, as long as it fits in our buffer. And then uh, it wants a GL char pointer, and that's a pointer to the buffer. Uh, so we'll just do log buffer. All right, and then I'll print it. So I'll do print. Uh, I'll do vertex shader compile new line, and then I'll print log buffer. And hopefully that doesn't cause any problems. Let's see what happens. All right, perfect. <clears throat> um, so here we can see we got the log buffer and it's giving us an error here. Uh, this line is not really gonna make any sense uh, since we are sort of writing our string here multi-line, but it is not actually inserting any multi-lines into the program. So, you know, if I actually print this source out, let's do that. Um, let's do, let's do printf source, and then I'll print it out like so. Uh, vert source. Okay, so here's the source code and you can see it's all used on one line. <laughs> so all of these, um, all of these lines here is being just concatenated on um, back to back. Luckily, they're semicolons, uh, so it won't actually cause any problems doing this. It will it will still be semicolons in between each um, each command and so on. So it will compile. Uh, it's just that it, you know the lines won't make any sense because it always will be line zero because <laughs> there is just one line. Um, all right. So what's the error here? Syntax error, unexpected identifier, expecting comma or semicolon add token. Okay, so that's my, you know, my stuff. I used insert, so I'm just going to remove that. Because that's what used to show that we can have errors. Okay, there we go. So now it actually, it compiles just fine. Um, but... I was actually hoping that it wouldn't because OpenGL has been around for a very long time. <clears throat> there are so many versions of OpenGL. Um, 
um, and they all have brought their own sort of shader language with them and to make shaders work with newer versions you want to actually provide in the shader hey which version of OpenGL is this shader made for uh, is it made for OpenGL ES which is their web uh, web uh, version or the mobile version is it made for an old version like you know OpenGL 1.0 or something uh, or is it for the new one uh, so it might not have worked for you guys uh, I think it depends sort of on which version of OpenGL you're running but just to be safe we're gonna put a version specifier at the top of the shader and this is always good to do anyways uh, when you're writing shaders in GLSL you always want to provide the version anyway uh, just to keep yourself safe that it works if I run it on my machine it's gonna work exactly the same on your friend's machine it won't be like oh the OpenGL version is a bit different so <laughs> the shader all of a sudden doesn't compile so the way that works is to uh, <laughs> hashtag I don't know I don't think it's called hashtag but I, I don't know it's whatever it's called hashtag and then you do version Excuse me. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. I actually don't know what the uh, newest one is, but I always type 330 core. All right. That's the one I usually um, I usually do. Uh, now we're going to run into a bit of a problem because we hard coded this. Um, <clears throat> it's going to say invalid profile core in. Uh, because again, these strings get concatenated. But the version specifier works kind of like, you know, includes where you don't write a semicolon at the end. Uh, they have to be on different lines, uh, these uh, specifier or hashtag commands. They have to be on different lines. We actually have to go in and just manually type a new line there. So I'll just do slash n uh, backslash n after the core. And now it should be on different lines. So now we have two lines. We have the version 330 uh, core and then the rest of the code on one big line. And I didn't get any compile errors. Great. Um, if you're going to compile errors or if something goes wrong, again, just type in the channel, uh, ask your colleagues or ping me in the channel and I will take a look at it as, you know, as soon as I have the time to do that. Um, Cool. Great. So that's the vertex shader. <clears throat> Deciding the position of the vertices. Now we're going to talk about the fragment shader. All right. Ooh, what? All right. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> so, pew, 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 pew. that gets sent uh, through. What was it called? Do you guys remember when you t it turns um, triangles and NDC space into pixels? It's called rasterize. That's re what, what rasterize. So the the triangle is going to get rasterized through the rasterizer into pixels, and those pixels or fragments. I don't think anyone actually calls it fragment. I think everyone calls it pixel. Even like you know, OpenGL nerds calls it a pixel shader, but uh, it's a it's 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 a fragment. They're the same. Doesn't matter. Yeah, you're gonna have to watch me do this. It's you know. You can speed up the video, it's fine, but you will I will draw these pixels. I will make sure this slide is accurate. Actually that looks Oh fuck, it doesn't look anything like the triangle. Fuck. Okay, let's just do this. See? This is a triangle. Okay, let's just uh, add this there. That's better. That's better than the shark fin I did yesterday. <clears throat> so it gets sent into the fragment shader. Great. So the fragment shader runs a lot of times. It runs once for every fragment. 
All right. Um, it looks very similar. So let's look at what a fragment shader might look like. I'm just gonna add a version here. So this is a vertex shader. Fragment shader. All right, so what does a vertex shader look like? Sorry, <laughs> what does a fragment shader look like? Uh, just like the vertex shader, it has a void main, right? So that's the thing, uh, that's still the same. And that's gonna be the entry point of the fragment program. Unlike uh, vertex shader where there was a magic variable to set, uh, there, is no ver uh, there is no magic variable for the fragment shader. We actually have to specify the output as an out here. So we're gonna type out vec4, um, I usually do O uh, color, uh, O for output in that case, but it, uh, it, you can name it anything you want really. The only important part is that it's an out and it's a VEC4. <clears throat> so in this case, we're defining that O color is going to be the output color of the, um, of the fragment shader. Uh, and that's what we set every time we run main. So just like we set GL position before for every vertex, now we're setting O color for every fragment. So I'll use the O color is equal to VEC4. And why VEC4? It's RGB, so red, green, blue, and then alpha. So alpha is the fourth, uh, the fourth component. So I'll do, uh, let's do a nice uh, five, yeah, nice, nice cyan, yeah. I don't even know, it's, it's that sign, or it's green and blue, I think the sign. It's always fun to use like type numbers in and then it's like, oh, that's that's hideous. <laughs> and I made that. And also the same with the fragment shader, we have to make, uh, we have to specify the version. So we'll specify 333, 330 core. Damn, I'm drooling. Um, cool, so let's do the same thing uh, in code. So I'll just go into code. And again, we're just gonna hard code um, our sh uh, fragment shader into the program. So let's do const char uh, frag source. You might think this is a tedious way of doing it, and I would agree. At some point in this lecture, I will probably implement some sort of, you know, create and load shader from file. <coughs> Actually, in um, uh, I can't talk and write at the same time. When I was working at Star Stable a long time ago, um, I was talking to the graphics program in there, and there it was one huge file, like one huge CPP file, which is all the shaders hard coded it like this. So it was like going into his cave when I went to that file. It was this like spider web everywhere. He was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want it to be like this, but it is. But it was just like all these hard-coded strings, and I was just like, my god. So yeah, I got out of there. Uh, there we go. I think that's good. I don't think I missed anything. Um, all right, cool. So let's... Um Okay, cool. All right, so we'll do the same thing uh, that we did for the sh uh, vertex shader, and we'll just do it again. But it's in, in this case, instead of creating a vertex shader, we're just going to create a fragment shader. But the rest of the code is going to be startlingly... Start... 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 Starting... Start... Similar. Okay, so let's just go... Fragment shader. Deciding the colors of our pixels. So I'm just gonna make a gluint frag shader. That's equal to GL create shader. And then we're gonna type GL fragment shader. Uh, GL shader source. Frag shader is our shader this time. So our shader handle. Because <laughs> that's the source code we wanna provide. Source code. We only have one source string. Uh, we're gonna provide a pointer to frag source, and we are gonna not provide a length. So you're just gonna type null there, and then we're gonna compile it. Compile shader, frag 
shader. All right, so very similar to our verb shader. In fact, it's almost identical, <laughs> except for its type here. Mm. And I will also get the shader info log here. So I'm going to go to fragment shader compile, uh, and I'm going to get the shader info log from the frag shader. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. Let's see what happens. Uh oh. Fragment shader compile. Mm, GL position is not accessible in this profile. Oh no. What did I do? Oh, I did, I... oh god. Like I said, GL position is not a global variable in the fragment shader. And, uh, you know, there you go. Hooray! It compiled! Whoop the doo, bro. Okay, so. Okay, so how do we use the shaders? Um, so need some of this. I should need some of this as well. Just taking in the fact that we got through shaded compilation. <clears throat> this is probably the biggest uh, information hump uh, to getting a triangle on screen, uh, I would say. Oh, fuck. Yes, okay. I was uh, <laughs> trying to regain my thoughts. Um, we can't just use these shaders raw, uh, just on their own. They actually have to be combined into what's called a program, a shader program. So I'm just going to write that. <coughs> mm -mm -mm. So we're going to combine these into what's called a shader program. All right. I usually call the shader program the material because that's because that's the general um, term that we use in the gaming industry for the complete pipeline of transforming vertices and and uh, lighting them, uh, putting color on them. We call that the material, right? So you know, in in um, in Unreal, you don't talk about the vertex versus the fragment shader. The material editor, you know, does both those things. Uh, even though, you know, under the under the surface, they are split up into the vertex and the fragment shader. But, you know, as a user, you don't really care. You see them as one packet. And that packet is the shader program in the case of OpenGL. <clears throat> so, we're gonna create a program. Shader program defining uh, the pipe of vertex fragments etc shaders um okay cool so we're gonna do gl create program don't need to do any um parameters it's just gl create program that's it so let's see. program all right so what we need to do now is tell this program which shaders are going to get used with it. All right, so we're going to do gl attach shader. And here we define the handle to the program to attach to. So which uh, program we're going to attach, attach a shader to. And then we're defining the handle to the shader to attach. So we're going to do vert shader. And then we'll do attach shader program frag shader. Oops. And then we're going to link the program. Uh, linking, I don't know. I don't actually know how similar it is to, you know, C++ linking with object files. But uh, we'll see later why what this step really means. Uh, right now, it's not 
gonna seem too obvious what this actually does. So we're gonna deal link program program. All right. So now we've created the program, we've attached our vertex and our fragment shader to it, and then we've linked it, all right? And now we're gonna use it, then we're gonna call gl use program, program. And this is sort of similar to the way we bind VIOs and VPOs uh, to uh, upload data or bind attributes in that we're telling OpenGL which program is the currently uh, worked on program. Um, in this case, you know, we're sending in the program as a as the parameter for all the very uh, for all the functions like GL attach shader and, and link program, so it doesn't need to be used there. In the case of programs, using is which shaders you use when we're drawing something. So this GL draw arrays, that's when you know the currently used program is actually uh, being looked at and it matters which one is used. Um, so uh, when we want to swap materials from one mesh to another, that means we're going to have to change which program we put into GLU's program, all right? So we're going to have to use one, draw uh, the, the cube, and then use the other material and draw the second cube. Um, great. I am very excited to see what's going to happen here. It's Cyan, you see that shit? Fantastic, okay, so what if we do something else? Let's do, let's make it red. Let's do one here, let's make it a little bit less blue. Ah, okay, orange, I'll take it. Fantastic. <clears throat> so. Sweet. We've done it. Um, we've completed the very, very basic, but still uh, complete pipeline from taking something uh, from this raw data in the vertex buffer. We bound it to attributes using the VAO or the vertex array object. And then we use those attributes in a vertex shader to define where on the screen the vertices are gonna appear. Uh, and then we've rasterized it, rasterized those uh, that triangles into individual pixels and fed those into the fragment shader where we've decided that each pixel is going to have this color orange. So, you know, not the most exciting shader ever, but hey, it's a shader. I'll take it. It's the first step to start doing cool stuff. <clears throat> All right, uh, great. I hope you guys are feeling great about this. I hope you're excited that now, you know, the info dump can sort of conclude a little bit and we can start doing stuff that I think is actually kind of cool. All right, uh, you know, making a shader that makes an orange triangle is maybe not the coolest thing I think exists in the world, but now, you know, it's like with space shuttles, if you get into orbit, you're halfway to anywhere. So I'll see you guys next time.